I have a problem. I am obsessed with sketchbooks. I don't know what it is. The paper, the formats, the, the profiles and different things you can do. I love sketchbooks. I like to just have them. I have so many that I've bound myself that I've never even touched. I just, I love them. I know it's an issue. I know it's a problem. And I'm going to feed the sickness. And lately, I don't know what it is. I, I start filming one video and I just get an idea for something completely different. I stop what I'm doing. I have a bunch of stuff set up for a completely different video. I started to record it and I was like, you know what? I just want to talk about sketchbooks. That's the most important thing to me right now. I just, I'm telling you, I, I'm obsessed. For me, I think they're more important than the paint, the brushes. I just, I love the paper. That's just what I like. So I just love everything about it. Today we're going to talk about the binding, like the traditional versus the spiral and the orientation of the landscape or the portrait or the square. And we're talking about the paperweight and we're going to talk about the paper content and what it's sized with. We're going to just go over everything today. And in the end, I'm going to share with you why I have so many. I have... I'll never fill those up. And I just bought it. I have another one coming in the mail that I just ordered because I wanted it because I, like I said, I'm obsessed. It's, it's unhealthy. All right, we'll get into it. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is the binding. How, what kind of binding do you like? Now I'm going to point out a couple different things here. So this is a spiral bound. A lot of people do not like this. Let me clear these off here. Okay, this is a spiral bound book. A lot of people do not like this. They they don't like it because they you cannot go across the gutter. However, one of the benefits of the spiral bound books is that they usually have very hard covers on them. There you go, very hard, very thick. You're not gonna bend that. So you can flip it back and work on your lap if you take it somewhere. And it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be a problem. You can sit this on your knee or something and it's fine if you have a little pallet you stick it on. It's it's fine. You, it's, it's It'll work. You can hand hold it and it doesn't bend when you push on the side. A lot of people like that about these books. However, they are sometimes hard to scan because this kind of hits the glass and kind of tilts it a little bit. So you end up with a slight skew. It's not much, but for some people it does bother them. When I buy my own sketchbooks, this is the kind of binding I use. It's just very simple. You can see on the back here, if you can see, these kind of close right here, these little loops here, and you just close them and, and you put them in a little machine and you pop the holes in the paper, you close it, it's fine. But a lot of these uh, store brand books are also bound with these rings. I don't have a problem. I like the rings and I like not the rings. Here's an example of one that's not a ring. And this was done by a friend of mine Christy Biddleson, she, she decided she was going to send me a gift and she sent me this beautiful sketchbook. I absolutely love it. And it has hot pressed paper in here, of course. It's, it's, that's what it is. But anyway, with the traditional binding, let me show you here. Okay, so with traditional binding here, um, or, or what they call traditional binding, it's easier to go across the page. Let me show you one that I did that with. I should have used this one as the example since it's one that I actually went across with. But again, it, it lays flat. Most of the ones that are traditionally bound for sketchbooks will lay flat, which is a huge benefit. And then you can do a full page spread right across and it looks like it belongs together. You do have that little spot there in the gutter, which is what they call the gutter anyway. But it's not hard that if you scan this in, if you have a scanner big enough to do that. That's another complaint people have is that they don't have a scanner big enough to scan the entire thing all the way across, so they end up doing it in two pieces anyway. But you can do a very simple, uh, just delete that little section right there. You just cut it on each side a little bit and move it together, and it looks like one piece. So you can do that. I think I've done that somewhere else in this book somewhere. There's another one that I did all the way across and it's it's nice to be able to do that. So if you want to position things the right way and it, you can do that, you can position things so that they look nice and they go across the gutter. It's harder to do that. You can do it 
with this kind of a book. I, I've never done that. I've never gone across the gutter in, in a book like this, but you can, you can go straight across. You just push it together and then you got to paint in between here and then it look, but it, you see this big line here. If you're scanning it in, if it's just for your sketches, no problem. But if you're trying to scan it in and, and save some of your work, then you might not like that. Now here's another thing with these. A lot of people say when you throw this in and out of your backpack, these get bent and they, it gets caught on things. And that's a problem sometimes. I don't find that. I've never found that. I've never had a problem with it. I guess if I was, uh, maybe if I had a different kind of bag, but the backpack I usually use to throw this stuff in, plenty of room, I never have that issue. But I guess it could, or you squish it, or you sit on it or whatever. Maybe that could happen. I could understand that. But I'll tell you what, on something like this, this binding here can come off too. So here's a good example. You have the string starting to pop off here. It can. You it now this it won't never bother me that that happened. But sometimes if you have the stitching in here it will come loose or you bend it a little bit, the glue will start to separate. That happens for these too. Okay, while I have this out, I have to ask you a question. A lot of people like this. This one has it too. This is the Hanamula book, the 100% cotton. This is the Etcher sketchbook, 100%. And they have this this thing here. I don't know if I necessarily like that. I think I do because it does hold the book closed when you're it's in your your pack or whatever. But I have no problem sticking a clip on here and doing that. It's the same thing. It holds it closed, maybe even a little better, and that doesn't bother me at all. You'll end up with some dents on here. I'll show you a book I did that with. Here's a book that I did that with. You see a little bit. This is a Stillman and Burn Nova series. And you see that little, it's like a little divot in here. It's not a big deal for me. I don't mind if the cover gets messed up a little bit or gets tossed around a little bit. I've had this book for years and it's fine. So that's just a side note. Maybe you like this thing. Maybe you don't. I don't mind it. But I, if it's not there, I'm okay. Okay, here's a little, here is a side rant. So this little thing here, I people love this. It's got a little envelope in here. You can, what are you gonna walk around with your taxes in your sketchbook? Is that something you like to do? I guess if, if you wanna do that, you can do that. You can put your taxes in here. You'll never lose them. They'll be in your sketchbook if that's what you wanna do. I don't understand that. I know people say, oh, but sometimes I find a little leaf I wanna put in there when I'm out sketching. Listen, you put a leaf in here, it's gonna dry out and crumble up and you will never ever get that out of there. All those pieces will be crammed down in there. They'll be stuck in the bottom and it'll start to eat away at the paper. It's not a good idea at all. I would never do that. Or some people say, well, what if I want a little picture? What if, what if somewhere in here I wanna tape a little picture and so I throw something back here and I say, oh, I just wanna put something in here and, and see if, if I save it for later, I'll tape it to one of the pages and do some mixed media stuff. That's fine. The problem is when you're out sketching, if you have to have it in here, you're out sketching, you're not gonna have like a roll of tape with you to put it in there. You're not gonna have some, some medium to put on the paper and glue it in there. You're not gonna have that with you most likely. And if you did, wherever you keep that glue, you put that thing. It's not a big deal. I just don't understand this. Maybe you wanna save your coffee grounds or your tea bag or something. I don't know what you wanna put in here, but I, I don't look at my sketchbook and say, hmm, what can I put in it? What do I wanna store inside my sketchbook other than the art that I put on the page? I have no idea what anybody's doing here. Maybe when I'm recording myself, I could put my camera lens in there, but then look at that. It's just gonna stick open. You don't wanna do that. It's just, you, you never want to do that. I just don't understand this. I think this is, this could have been another page that I could have put in here. But I know some of you people, you're weird. You like to do stuff like that. That's fine. I'm not, look, I'm not judging you. I just don't think there's a purpose for an envelope inside of a sketchbook. I have envelopes in my office. I don't have to worry about one in my sketchbook. That's all. Next topic is orientation. Now look, some people love these when I first got a professional sketchbook, it was a portrait size sketchbook, not, not this big, but it was one of the smaller portrait sketchbooks. And 
I, for a long time, I was like, oh, and I can just fill these up and, and be done with them. So I can't wait to get this landscape. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the orientation of the sketchbook. And when I first started getting sketchbooks, I got the smaller Stillman and Burns sketchbooks of my first professional sketchbook. And they were, they were portrait. They were this way, tall, this way. And that was never a I, I enjoyed that, but I always said, oh, I'm gonna, I can't wait to fill those up so I can get a landscape book because it looks so nice and interesting and I paint landscape, so why don't I like that? But, but here's the thing with the landscape, and I do like the landscape books. I like how they can just kind of flow. Well, let me give you a good example there. Uh, kind of flow into each other and you can just kind of do that and go a long ways it's wonderful if you want to do something tall you can flip it this way and go do something tall for the most part you're constrained you you have you have this small area so for example this bird i had to redraw this several times because i started to do it this way and it, i just oh i ran out of room i gotta kind of crunch it again and crunch it again so make sure that you're comfortable working in the space that you're working in. I, if you're doing more landscape stuff and you, you do that in this kind of, you just want that panoramic view, that's wonderful. It's beautiful. I do love that. Just make sure you at least have a book that can do the other way so you don't get frustrated when you're working this way. Now, I, I'm not the best with composition, so when I kind of create things, I'm still working on that. I severely need to work on that. So when I'm working on my composition, and that's really all the abstract art is, you have to do the right composition and make it look interesting, otherwise it's nothing. So, But I'm, I'm still working on that, and sometimes the way it works out I wish I could have gone a little taller, but you can you can train yourself to go this way. It's not a big deal, but there are certain things as like, oh, I wish I would have made that just a little bit taller and or shrunk it down a little bit to be more proportioned to the size that I wanted. And that way you don't run out of room and go off the page where you wanted to maybe this, I might've wanted to finish this, uh, make it a little bit more complete, but I had to cut it short so it looks a little stubby. And so anyway, I'm just saying that's something you have to think about with that. When you go to the square, it's a little different. Square is a little bit more, I would say the square book is great for landscapes because you can do a two page spread across. It's a landscape, but it gives you a little bit more to work with. And then if you just put something on one page, you're just evenly proportioning it. It's just whatever, however tall it is, that's how wide it should be to make it look good on the page. And that's, that's really what you're doing. But if, if you're going across the page, you can turn it. I don't think I've done that in this book yet. I, I don't think so. No, I have not done that in this book yet. I need to do that. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's something I'm working on. Something I'm finding that I'm enjoying more is going across the page. Not completely, but designing composition that kind of cuts into the other side of the page a little bit. Or maybe it goes this way and then comes up a little bit and that but anyway building the composition on the page is something i'm really working on i have to do that better now in the portrait format now first of all i'm going to say in portrait you're you're going to do things a little bit differently with with the spiral bound as you do with the traditionally bound when you're looking at composition and you're looking at the orientation of the book because i can very easily do something in the portrait and do something a little bit taller so here's a good example of something I did tall, and then in the next section is something that I did long. Now with, with the spiral, again, you're bending it over. So I can do it this way, and it doesn't bother me. One of the good things about the spiral book is if you're right-handed, you keep the spiral on this side when you work on this page, and you can keep it upright. I did not do that. But when you go to the next page and you go on this side and you say, oh, I want to also draw on this side, but I don't want my arm resting on that metal, you can then just go like this and do something in a landscape view. So if you have a bigger book, a bigger spiral bound book, same thing if you're left handed, you'd be working, you don't want to work this way left handed, so you flip it this way for that page. And then when you get to the back side of it, you can flip it back to normal and do something more vertical. So it, it's it's definitely um, a benefit to having a spiral bound book, especially with a hard cover, that you can do those things with. 
but again, you're not going across the page. So if you like to do that kind of thing, uh, it's a little bit more difficult. Obviously, I like all of these. I like to do some things very tall. I like to do something panoramic, like short and stubby, maybe like this, but then across both pages and just do something like that. So, and then I also enjoy doing this. I also enjoy using these and doing something across the page, which I have not done in this book, but I've done it in other books that are square. And you just do something across the page and you have a little bit more room to work with on the vertical side if you want to, but you can cut it into the other side if you need to. Now, so far, everything I've shown you has had a hard cover on it. So this is hard. You can sit with this open on your lap, put pressure on it. You're not gonna bend that much. It's, it's pretty good. This is a soft cover and I really enjoy the soft covers too. I really do. The, the soft cover is nice because when you, uh, just the way it feels, it, it, it's, if you're a tactile person, it feels nice. It feels smooth. It feels like it's, it's like, it's almost like a, a fake leather, but it's not even supposed to be. It's just supposed to be a smooth cover and you, you open it up. It opens flat, but you can, if you're going to draw on it and you have to hold it, you're going to have a problem here. It's going to bend on you. So you want to lay it on something, lay it flat on a desk or something and use it. I like the way these feel and I tend to grab these if I can, if what I'm doing is going to lend to me just laying this flat on a table. I love to use this kind of thing. Most of the new sketchbooks that are coming out, especially the cotton books, they are hard bound. They're hard cover, I mean. So you're going to have that hard cover, but a lot of people like the soft cover. And I think when uh, Stillman and Byrne went to the hard cover, they I went to the soft cover rather, they, they had a lot more sales, or at least they increased them. This is a hard bound from Stillman and Byrne, and it kind of looks like, okay, so there's a, a two page spread in a portrait size where I just went across, but it turns into a square when it's a portrait, of course. Anyway, you can you can hold this and it doesn't move and you can draw on it as hard as you want you can use colored pencil you can use marker whatever you want watercolor is not going to move the book okay now we're going to hit two big topics that i think are probably more in the realm of where people argue about things because really nobody cares what you're using as far as whether it's a hard bound or soft bound or whatever you use whatever you like you use the coil book, you use the, the traditionally bound book. Most people are fine with that. They don't care what kind of orientation book you're using. But when it comes to the, whether you're using mixed media paper or whether you're using watercolor paper, people tend to flip out. They say, no, you can't use watercolor on mixed media paper, which you absolutely can. And you can use it, but the, the thing is, that when you use the watercolor paper, it's thicker. It just tends to be a little thicker. Although, I don't know, this paper, very, very thick. And so, I don't know what the difference is. There's sizing, some people say, oh, on one of them, the sizing is only on top. And on the other one, the sizing is in it and on it. Or sometimes it's just in the mixture of the paper. It's, it's the sizing is in there. Listen, I've seen watercolor paper with all those qualities. I've seen watercolor paper with sizing just in the mix, sizing on top and both. So like, it's not that. It's not the thickness of the paper because like I said, I'm gonna use this one as a different example even though you don't have no idea that I just changed it. But really, it's thick. So this Stillman and Burn book is 270 GSM. 270 GSM is watercolor paper. As far as I'm concerned, that's what it is, but they call it mixed media paper. Now, the I believe it's the Strathmore. You can say, well, mixed media paper is usually uh, is is pulp paper, and then the watercolor paper is 100% cotton. But I've seen the Strathmore uses 100% cotton for their mixed media paper. They call it mixed media because it's a little bit thinner. It's only 90 pound paper. But then if you use their other mixed media paper, you're talking like 180 pound paper. And they call that mixed media paper, but it's pulp paper. So then people say, no, it's pulp paper. And that's why they call it. It, it doesn't, people don't understand anything about anything 
really what the what the fact is is if you can use water on it and you can use dry media on it then it becomes mixed media so this is just my estimation I have no idea I think mixed media paper is a little smoother it's like a hot press watercolor paper although hot press watercolor paper books exist they they have them in, in etcher and Paul Rubens and they're all hot press watercolor paper this is the this is the Zeta series so this is a, a very smooth compared to the beta series is a little bit not it's, it has a little texture to it. it's a little bit thicker than this but you can use pencil on this very well whereas a regular traditional watercolor book is usually going to be uh, cold pressed paper although they make the hot pressed paper so in I have no idea why what would make someone call something a mixed media paper versus a watercolor paper I have no idea it has nothing to do with the thickness nothing to do with the texture nothing to do with the sizing because they all come in all the different varieties so I have no idea it's just a marketing term and they're targeting different audiences and that's the only thing I can figure out if you know please let me know and don't tell me now hold on I want you to tell me down below but I don't want you to mention the sizing the thickness of the paper the texture of the paper because I can show you a watercolor paper and a mixed media paper that has all the qualities that you're gonna mention both at the same time so come up with something other than that what else is there and one last thing don't tell me that yeah maybe on hot press paper you can use pen but you can't use it on 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 cold press paper because I do this is cold press paper this was a dip pen and this is a brush pen but it's ink either way there's, that's ink I signed my name in pen nothing skipped it's it's cold press paper I do it in all my cold press books matter of fact I get rough press paper and I use ink on it and it's no problem for me I never have a problem with it everybody freaks out oh your lines start skipping I've never had a if you use a normal pen I've never had my lines skip across any paper you can do it you just you don't go as fast but you can do it if you go slower a little bit just a little bit slower you can get a full line on rough press paper okay now let's talk about the big one the big one is pulp versus cotton everybody has seems to think that professional paper is only cotton paper 100 percent cotton is the only thing that's considered professional i don't think so i am going to disagree with you but hear me out i'm not saying all paper is the same I have found cotton paper that streaks and puddles and gets splotchy and all those other things because it's not the highest quality cotton paper. But it's still 100% cotton. I'm not saying that about this book. I love this book. The Hanamiola book, 100% cotton. It, it's very smooth. You put down a wash. You can blend colors very nicely, very easily no problem with that I've never had a problem in this book at all I pretty much get the effect that I want to get in this book I've never had a problem where things got really splotchy this is multiple layers of the same colors nothing gets splotchy everything works out this I intentionally wait for it to dry a little bit and put a little extra color in and it still spreads out nice and evenly across all the color everything is wonderful I do enjoy it let's move on to the pulp papers really the only pulp papers that I have are from Stillman and Burn because I like how they work here's the thing you can see a lot of splotchiness in here a lot of unevenness this is not very even wash but I love that look when I was doing this I was doing that on purpose these are a lot smoother over here because I did them very smooth but when I was doing this one I made it a little splotchy on purpose I love that it did that and that's the one that doesn't accept water very well that's the Zeta series or, or at least I don't think it does so back in 2015 I started this book this is also a Stillman and Burns Zeta series you can see how terrible it washes okay this is very difficult to wash the other one was too but this one I was trying to get a smooth wash in the background could not do it but then you come to something like here and the wash is fairly smooth throughout this piece here 
it's it's just depends on how you do it you have to work a little harder at it this is a cellulose paper this is not a cotton paper better for using like pencils and things i'm going to go through the stillman and burn line because i have so many of them and i i like them for different reasons but when i did this one i understood that i wasn't going to get smooth washes so if you look in these trees those were supposed to be pretty smooth if you look in here, I didn't do that smooth. I, I put a base layer down and then I would, cause cellulose paper, many times it sucks the water in a lot quicker. So you put down your base wash one time, just a flat wash done. You don't do a whole lot of wet into wet because on pulp paper, it can start to pill. So I get that. It doesn't mean it's less professional. It just means that you have to work it differently. I went back in and I started layering in some shadows and some extra shapes and extra shading. And that's what I did all back in here. I did a wash first, then I put in some extra shading. Then when I went over here, I did the big, the big washes. But you can see if you go back to this video, which is not that long ago, you go back to this video and you see when I put it in, you see splotchiness in these big washes, these big areas of color here. I like that when I use this because that tells me where I should start putting my lines, where I can put my line work, where I can add the detail because I see where the splotches are. It gives me the idea of where to add that information. But that's because I do abstract stuff. If you're doing stuff like this, you can also get a very nice result I think, this is my own opinion, you may not like this, but this section here came out exactly the way that I wanted it to. It didn't come out splashy, the, the uh, washes were even when I first put them down. I was able to put the shadows in and layer the color on top once it was dry. Then you start to layer the second layer. You just have to let it dry in between layers. You do a lot of wet into wet, you'll start to destroy the paper. Back here is a wash, but you can see a little streakiness in here. I don't mind it because it was in the sky and I was going to do the abstract thing over it anyway. So you don't do a big wash, like a giant wash, but little sections you can do washes and it works just fine. But this is my recommendation to everyone. If you don't want to fight your paper, I don't care if you're just starting out brand new or if you've been doing this for 50 years. If you don't want to fight the paper, you go with 100% cotton. If you don't mind all the little imperfections and impurities in the in the regular cellulose paper and you enjoy having little things pop up that kind of mess up what you were doing but now you can do something else with it then go ahead and use the cellulose paper I find it to be extremely fun this is the one that holds up the least this is the Zeta series from Stillman and Byrne it does not do well with wet into wet most people just use this for uh, like this is for like colored pencils or for uh, watercolor pencils specifically or line and wash like what I was doing. So this was hot press. This is not textured very much at all. And you don't see splotchiness. You see I went did a lot of wet into wet in this piece. All this is is wet into wet. There's no there's no dry on top of anything. So I started and just made a puddle and then I started to put color in and just dab it in dab it in kept dabbing it in over and over again wet into wet until it ended up like this but even here the washes are very nice and even unless i concentrated it on purpose concentrated it I, you know what i mean unless i did it more concentrated on purpose the wash back here was very smooth no problem the wash all down here very smooth no problem because it's cotton paper so if you don't want to fight the paper use cotton even if you're a beginner, you're just starting out, and you're like, oh, but I want to practice on the other paper before I use the good paper. No, I don't hear people all the time, oh, no, I want to, I want to save the good paper, the cotton paper, for when I'm doing something because it's so expensive. I don't want to mess anything up on it. I'll use the pulp paper for just practice. That's not how this works. If you learn to use pulp paper, you will learn how to use pulp paper. It'll be a hundred times different when you use cotton paper. The techniques I use on pulp paper are not the techniques I use on cotton paper and vice versa. I can't use the cotton paper techniques on the pulp paper. You have to learn how to use your tools differently depending on what you're doing. And that's why I have so many sketchbooks is because I like all the different things. I like all the different bindings. 
I enjoy all the different profiles and all the different positionings of, of how the books are. I enjoy all of the different the, the types of paper that you can use. I like the thinner paper. I like the thicker paper. I like the smooth paper. I use, like the rough paper and the, the, the in-between cold press paper. I like using the cotton paper and I love using the pulp paper. Here's the thing. It all comes down to one thing. When you look at a sketchbook, it has to fit your application. If you buy a book that fits your application, you will love it. But if you try to do something completely different that it's not made for, you will hate that book. And you'll say, I hate it. It doesn't work for me. I don't understand why people even use this thing. And you'll throw it away and say it's the worst thing. You'll tell everyone else not to use it just because you didn't use it right. Let me show you one more thing before we go here. Everybody either loves or hates this book, but most people hate this book. Why? Because it's 90 pound, 98 pound paper, but it feels thinner than that, if you ask me. And people don't like it because it doesn't hold up very good to large washes and things like that. If you look, matter of fact, here's, here's a watercolor wash, and from the other side, you can see all the buckling. See all the shadows from the buckling? Yup, it buckles. That's what it does. But... This was Graphitint pencils. I must have done at least, I don't know, a half a dozen layers on this ball here. And the paper held up. There's no pilling. I would just go into it, then I'd wet it and wash it down. Then I'd go in again, wash it down, go in again, wash it down, until I came out with the end result that I wanted. Everything worked wonderfully. Here's the Inktense pencil, same thing. I would draw, wash it down, draw, wash it down kept doing that over and over again the paper never peeled there's there's some texture on the paper so some of the pencils stuck in some of the crevices here so it didn't dilute all the way it didn't dissolve all the way but there's no pilling at all this is very smooth this is colored pencil I went over it and then I used the um, odorless mineral spirits to thin it out and to blend it and I went over and over and over and over don't worry about that until I finally had so many layers I went over it one more time that I didn't dissolve the pencil and I left it kind of crayony looking on purpose but this handled dozens of okay maybe not dozens it, it handled at least a half a dozen layers with the alcohol blender and everything was absolutely fine oh I did I did not use odorless mineral spirits I used an alcohol blender but it's the same thing it's the same thing so using the paper the way it's supposed to be used, everything works. Everything's fine. There's no problems here. I didn't go in layer after layer with watercolor and wet into wet because I knew the paper wouldn't handle it. But does it handle everything else I've done with it? Yes, absolutely. This is the Stillman and Burn Nova book. This one was Odorless Mineral Spirits. There are, there are dozens of layers on here because I kept trying to see how much longer can I keep tuning this with the odorless mineral spirits to get this to keep uh, keep going and keep changing and there are probably I would say at least a dozen layers on this one it's just I put a ton of work into this and just kept layering and layering and layering and then dissolving it and layering layering dissolving it and it held up absolutely fine and it didn't even go through to the other side so this is 150 GSM so it's a very thin paper compared to other watercolor papers and when you put some gouache on it or whatever, see the buckling up here because I put a ton of gouache on it, a lot of water, and there you go. That happens. It's fine. As long as you don't care that that's going to happen, use whatever book you want to use. But this book, I know I can use watercolor in. Tons of layers on all of these. No problem. The paper didn't pill. It didn't get destroyed. It's fine. I just didn't do a whole lot of wet into wet. These are my two favorite pictures in this whole book. This is of my dog. That's just of a chipmunk. I don't know this one. I know this one. But I don't think I can tell you how many layers I, of paint I put on this. I just don't do a lot of wet into wet. I put the layer on. Let it dry. Do another layer. Let it dry. And it works just fine. I don't know if you saw me do any of these. I don't remember if these are on the channel or not. But... A lot of wet into wet this was a lot of wet into wet that's for cotton paper and that's what I do on the cotton paper because I know it's gonna hold up I know it's gonna be absolutely fine it's gonna be very smooth very wonderful and that's what you do 
So use the right tool for the right job. You won't have a problem. Get all the sketchbooks. Try them all. Try a pulp paper like this one. The Stillman Burn, I, I think the still, in my opinion, and this is, don't listen to me when I talk about Stillman and Burn paper. I have a very unhealthy attachment to the paper for some reason. I have no idea why other than saying that these the, had the Zeta and the, the Beta in the same size and they were the first professional sketchbooks that I ever had. And for some reason, I have an unhealthy relationship with them. However, I say relationship, I mean all the unhealthy attachment. I don't, I'm not in a relationship with Stillman and Byrne. So anyway, but the, the, the Stillman and Byrne papers are some of my favorite. I happen to like the best is this kind of paper. I just ordered uh, the Alpha series, which is this paper. It's the thin paper uh, of the gray and the black and the tan but it's in white. The reason that I ordered that and I didn't order a Zeta or a Beta again is because I've worked on them and, and I'm certain things I, I enjoyed and certain things I didn't, but they're very heavyweight paper. I wanted, I enjoy painting on this. I don't care that it buckles. I've never, I actually did a lot of wet and to wet on this side here. Nothing pilled, everything's fine. I have yet to make to break this paper. It does do the buckling thing. I don't care about that because it's a sketchbook. I'm not trying to sell anything here. But I've dumped ink on it. I've, I've dumped watercolor on it. I cannot break this paper. So I'm going to try my best to break the paper and see what I can do. But like I said, I don't listen to me when it comes to them. you got to figure things out. I have other pulp papers that I absolutely cannot stand. This is going to be a bad example. This is the Fluid 100. No, this is the Fluid watercolor paper in this book. It's a handbook, field journal, I think it is. Is that what they call it? Yeah, the field watercolor journal from handbook. It has made with fluid watercolor paper, but this is the pulp paper. Still very smooth. Everything is very smooth here. And then what you do the wet and to wet, everything looks fine. But as I was going through, I'm like, wait a minute. Something's wrong with this. It's very dull. The colors are not very vibrant like they need to be. This was gouache. Gouache is, is a different animal. It sits on top no matter what. But all the watercolor I was doing, it sinks in. And it looks very dull. And I don't like that. So I don't like this book. I have the Canson Montval watercolor book. I don't like that pulp paper because everything looks very dull on it. I just use it to take like this book if I'm if I'm just playing around and doing something for example if I did something on this page that I liked a little tiny thing here that I liked but the rest of the page is ruined with all this stuff I would cut it out and I'll paste it in that book and uh, that's what I do with that other book would you like me to shut up yet have I talked your ear off and not made any sense and I've gone back over the same subject a hundred times because that's what I do and that's I, I love talking. I can talk about sketchbooks until you can stop listening. I will never stop talking about them. So here's, and here's a good example. So here you go. We're talking about the, the coils. This one popped a little bit. It's a little bit off of the round. That doesn't bother me. It's a, this book has been around, I think, 2016 I got this book. It's been around since then. It's been in and out of a lot of different things. And maybe it did get caught a little bit. Doesn't affect how the book works at all. It doesn't bother me. I don't sit there and obsess about how round the spirals are. I don't care about that. They're not crushed. They're just a little bit off. They're just, but they could have come that way too. I have no idea. So anyway, thumb up the video if you're going to ignore everything I've said. You're going to just do whatever you want to do anyway. You already have a favorite book. You already have a favorite type of book. You already have a favorite type of binding. You already have a favorite type of, of portrait or, or landscape or whatever profile you like, the square ones. You already have a favorite color of the, or favorite uh, type of pulp or, or cotton and maybe a favorite color. You don't like the white or you don't like the feeling of the cloth and you rather have the feeling of the leather and or maybe like the hard book or you like the soft book or I, whatever it is you like you're just gonna just ignore everything I've said anyway and do whatever you want and that's what I recommend anyway this was a complete waste of time I can't believe you sat there and listened to this whole video it was just absolute nonsense and 
I should be ashamed of myself, but I'm not. I'm just not going to say it. All right. If you would like to join our community, go to illustrationsbypete.com. You can come in. You can put your own artwork on the site and promote it. You can find some inspiration in the free reference photos. You can just use them however you want in your artwork. You do not need to credit me. Or you can come into the forums and talk to some people and maybe give some advice and maybe find a little bit of information that helps you. So come check us out. All right, that's about it for me. I'm going to go. I'll see you in the next one.